Welcome to the Conscious Creative from MuseWorks Audio. The Conscious Creative is a podcast featuring interviews with artists who are doing transformational work in their craft and in their communities. Join us as we discuss different artistic philosophies, give you brand new tools to bring back to your creative spaces, and build a community of artists dedicated to deepening their relationship with their craft. I'm your host, Mike Irish. Thank you for joining us. Imperative is a dynamic music producer on the forefront of a wave of new Canadian talent. With a spectrum of styles ranging from boom bap to trap to new school, Imperative is a true conductor of vibrant soundscapes. I've known Imperative for a few years being in the scene in Vancouver, and my favorite things about Imperative beyond just the music production is I really feel like he's a visionary and he has a greater vision for his brand and for his business and I really respect that. As well he has a serious dedication to his craft and to artistry in general which we dive into both of those aspects in detail and I think that this episode has a lot of value not just for beat makers and producers but for artists in general and how to stay inspired how to stick to your goals I hope this is of value to you and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the conversation thanks so much for tuning in now just a quick word from our sponsors and then we'll get into the episode I want to take a moment to talk about my friends over at Soundfly. They're making incredible online music courses that you can either take on your own with a low-cost subscription or one-on-one with a professional mentor. You can learn beat making, mixing, songwriting, composing, arranging, synths, home recording. There's, There's really anything. If you go the mentor route, they'll build a customized learning plan around your personal goals and needs and provide you with an in-depth feedback on your work. But if you don't want that hands-on support, the courses are creative and niche enough for you to find your own groove. Whether you want to learn how to orchestrate for a string ensemble, build a low-end heavy trap beat in Ableton Live, or brush up on your harmonic theory to make more compelling and emotive music, there's definitely a course for you. And the best part is I've partnered with them to get you 15% off your monthly subscription. Just head over to soundfly.com to sign up and enter code CREATIVEPOD15 to let them know I sent you and to start improving on all the musical things you always wanted to learn. All right, we're going to get into the show now. Welcome to the Conscious Creative Imperative. I'm really, I'm really stoked to to have you on because I've, I'm kind of one of the quieter guys in the Clockwork Crew, but I've been like, you know, in the scene for quite a while in Vancouver in the hip hop scene, and I, I do quite a bit of watching on social media, and I've seen, I've seen you doing your thing for quite a while, and I'm really impressed with your vision and the way you grind and ultimately the music that you that you end up producing and uh i'm i'm just really stoked to to have a chat with you man cool well uh, yeah i uh really appreciate you having me and and chatting with you. i'm you know i'm really excited for you with this new platform um so i'm excited to be just chatting with you it's been a while since i've chatted any, to, to anyone in a format like this so i think it's gonna be good Sweet. Um, you know, a lot a lot has happened this year um yeah. you know, both within music my life and then also just in the world so i think there's lots to definitely lots to talk about <laughs> yeah i'm uh i'm stoked to stoked to talk about everything that you're doing actually with with the <laughs> production of your own albums and um and production for other people and you're doing so much visual work as well it's really really cool um yeah. the first thing i wanted to chat to you about is i you probably don't remember, but I bumped into you at a show like probably five years ago, basically when I first moved to Vancouver. And I remember you talking about how you have been doing like four hours a day of production. And I really, I love it when I talk to artists who are like really dedicated to their craft. And 
I'm just curious where you got that motivation from and, uh, right. and how you got started in beat making um, to begin with. Right. Well, I mean, I know, uh, so we were chatting before off camera um, yeah. and, and we were both saying we kind of like lived in our 20s a little reckless. So you're right. I, I kind of don't remember the concert. <laughs> uh, do, um, I definitely went to a few and was, uh, you know, probably had a few drinks of that. Uh, do you remember what concert that was? It was uh, Tobias and uh, Tyler Sky. Okay, crazy. Okay, so that was... Uh, at Studio. At Studio, right. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, I think the vague, the details are coming back. <laughs> um, but it's still a little, little blurry. Yeah, um, it's a little blurry for me too, to be fair. So uh, in terms of like that, that work ethic, I guess, um, though at the time I don't think I necessarily thought of it in that sense, it comes from a few different places. I, I would say one is my father. I do attribute a lot of this to my father is, um, you know, he would always tell me that I could be anything I wanted, um, you know, really give me that. <laughs> Even though it's funny now that I'm a, a, pursuing music, it might not necessarily be the, the same sort of attitude, but, uh, but still supportive. But um, yeah, definitely like, you know, you could do whatever you wanted. And, and so I mean, I've, I've done a lot of different things throughout my life and, and, you know, one of those being skateboarding and, and another being snowboarding. So to have that mentality that I can do anything or, or be whatever I want to be, uh, and then couple that with going into skateboarding where it's a sport where really it's either you start and you keep going or you quit because you scrape your knee, um, skateboarding, you, you know, you'll be out on the streets trying to do a kickflip for hours days weeks until and then that's that's just like a kick flip or like you know and then then you move into like the harder stuff um so i think sports like that um definitely you know push pushed me in the right direction of like not stopping and then in a way it's just uh it's an addiction to just like whatever i'm really into at that time so like even skateboarding or snowboarding like i'm like hyper focused into those things so it's like, like, I remember like skateboarding, snow, like I would have like magazines galore. I would be watching all the videos. Uh, and, and then now like with music, it, it's no different, man. Like I, I, I transitioned from, uh, you know, I, I've made it known kind of my story with snowboarding and that um, in, in other places, but uh, like, yeah. And I'm sure I think some will probably talk a bit about it, but um, yeah, it's just coming from snowboarding and going into that. It's like basically all the snowboard posters came down and it was like, hip hop idols <laughs> going up yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the trans world snowboard magazines switched to double XL magazines. Um, the VHS snowboard movies and DVDs switched to YouTube videos and, and then things like that. So um, it was just like, uh, so yeah, I, I had to leave snowboarding because of a, an injury and then uh, I, I didn't have a creative outlet. And so it was just like music became that thing. It was kind of like uh, right, right place, right time. And then it was like, kind of made the mental note, like, I'm going to do this. Like, I think in my head, it, are, like, it wasn't like it was just going to be a hobby. It was like, so, yeah, that's kind of where that came from. The, the motivation to, to just like do it, uh, it really is, is an overall passion for it. Um, in all aspects like not just the making is like well where did the culture come from like the who's who like who which producer is who and like how do they do stuff it just yeah, yeah really goes into it yeah it's interesting i think that you know often we look at athletes and and uh creative people as being sort of separate you know like like the jock stereotype is not the artist stereotype but right. i i've done sports in the past and i also know other artists who who have and they use that mentality to really like put in that work on their craft and i feel like there's more overlap than than maybe a lot of people would think like the jock and like the artist um but I definitely find more now um, there is a, a more of a parallel. Uh, like I'm one of the artists I'm working on with, uh, Akil Ali. He was a professional football player. Okay. 
played cool. for the CFL. Um, yeah. He played for the Argonauts actually um, for a bit, but he's down in the States. And um, so we're working and yeah, we, we <clears throat> kind of compare like how my snowboarding and then, uh, you know, now what, like what he's doing with football and transitioning into music. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the drive is similar. A lot of the industry is, is very, very similar. Yeah. And, and you're working on that project right now. Where, where is it? And yeah, it's, it's kind of like it's uh, he, yeah, we're, we're in the works right now. It, it's uh, I believe it is a collab uh, between him. So Akil Ali and uh, G4 Jag, G4 Jag. So, um, kind of inducted me or adopted me into his fly family. And then G4 Jag himself is a part of the Lord mob, which is a uh, flea Lord. So under underground New York hip hop scene. pretty Dope, much. dope, dope. I feel like from what I've been seeing you produce on social media and stuff like that, I feel like that's sort of the lane that you've been doing a lot of. Is that just out of being around those kind of people or is it, um, I think it's 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 almost where I've always wanted to be. Um, uh, I think, especially like when I first started making hip hop, like I was inspired by uh, the ski beats, uh, you know, making currencies, pilot talk, um, the uh, the alchemist, <clears throat> uh, again currency, the covert coupe is another like big album. My earlier influences like Mob Deep and Big L. Um, so the first type of mu like music I was making with Jay West was like definitely a lot more like boom bap, sort of classic, hip, grimy New York hip hop. But then um, once Jay West, and we started dabbling with some like trap and, and stuff like that, with Jay, even in like Jay West's career, um, kind of it, it felt like one, it, like hip hop's kind of gone through some turns even in the last 10 years. So it, we felt it was kind of like almost a bit out of necessity just because of what the listeners were looking for, um, especially being such new artists ourselves. When you're that new, it, it, to hold true to your roots is, is almost, it's a very tough thing to do. So we, we definitely experimented. Um, but then like enter guys like West Side Gun and Griselda <clears throat> and who have like brought back quote unquote, like the boom bap re renaissance out of New York. Um, and it was like, oh shit, like, I can make these type of beats that I like doing. And, uh, you know, there is a lane and there is a market for that. Um, so um, I was kind of going that route, but uh, it, it just wasn't working in Vancouver. So now that I've, but like with the power of the internet, I was able to connect with a lot of people that like all, a lot of my, uh, opportunities that have come come to I, I like i attribute to um instagram but like not just instagram like my own networking within instagram and using the platform um but yeah this is definitely for now where i want to be like i'm not gonna i, I don't know like i don't want to say that this is what i'm gonna only do um, I don't want to be a one trick pony. Like, I, I think I still am known as, like for being very versatile for my beats. Um, I think there's even on the clockwork, uh, compilation, uh, which is done. I think you, you mix, mix the whole thing. So I, I haven't heard it, but like, that, that's a dope feat. Uh, there's a lot of tracks, a lot of different artists. So, so yeah, congrats yeah. for doing that. But, um, <laughs> Thanks, so, but you, you, you've heard the, like even my beats on that. So, like, I think there, there's a, a range on there from, like, so, um, yeah, I don't want to say, like, I'm going to be doing this, but right now I feel comfortable in this. I feel like I'm getting recognition for this. Um, I, I really love, I fell in love with sampling uh, early in hip-hop. Like, like I said, I dove in, and, like, so learning about sampling and Alchemist and Ski Beats are two big uh, of my influences, and they are big samplers. So for me to sit on my, like, not on my computer, but go to a record store, sit on my computer, like dive through YouTube and just sit here listening to music for like hours. Like I, like that's, I, I just love that. And then to find, find a small piece that I can use and like it triggers my ear and then I can like start making my own thing. To me, that that's the process. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, right now, like 
the other thing is like I see like a lot of uh, the trap beats right now are really getting kind of factory made in a sense. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, that's where I kind of like like because I, I really pride myself on my samples as well. Like I can like someone asked me the other day to like, yo, that beat, it sounds really simple. Like how long did that take you to make? And I was like, that beat might have taken me like an hour in total from like uh, from chopping the sample to laying it out to mixing like full sort of thing. But to find that sample, that sample might have taken me literally from when I started making beats 2008 till now to find <laughs> that one sample. You know what I mean? Like, cause like you could be like, I'm, I'm constantly looking for new samples and like, who knows how long it took me to find that one. Yeah. Like, so. Man, so cool. So cool. So when, when I look at your social media, I feel like you have such a clear vision from your, 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 what, what you post on social media and also with your albums and your album covers and just the way you promote. And then like the shoots that you've done with, with aperture photography, I just feel like you have such a cohesive vision. And do you, do you feel like that's true? Or is that just something where I'm like seeing somebody and I'm like connecting the dots? Um, I'd say yes and no. Okay. Um, I think I definitely have like a vision of uh, one of the things that's going to come out at the end of this year. We'll kind of like explain it a, little, a little bit more is like um, I have this one graphic and it's uh, I kind of use it for my drum kit this year. It's like I've, I now have like kind of a comic character in a sense um and, and for imperative and and so then what i'm going to do for this next one and, and stuff is always evolving and just sometimes the ideas or the reasons don't necessarily come to me until after and then i'm like oh you know what that kind of makes sense why i did that um i, I made a, a post a long time ago and it was like venom and eddie brock and like venom's kind of coming off of eddie brock and I just made like a bit of a meme and like Venom was imperative. And then Eddie Brock was Nate Butcher. So uh, the, the concept I'm doing is it's going to be, uh, it's an instrumental album of all the beats that I've kind of released commercially throughout the year. So it's Nate Butcher is imperative. So I have a vision of what or who imperative is in a sense. Um, not that he's like a character. It's just like a, a, a it is a brand, right? And a lot of that branding comes, I, I believe that we're like an, um, an amalgamation of everything that's happened in our life to this day, right? Um, so the snowboarding, the skateboarding, um, I, I have a diploma in multimedia design. Um, so the full circle aspect was like, I went to school for everything but music. And then I taught myself music. Um, and then um, skateboarding is very graphic driven brand driven so is snowboarding and i was in those industries like working in stores working for um crew and super as the rep so you're around branding all the time so i was kind of after jay west and i stopped making music jay west kind of like he just didn't want to be in the industry really anymore that left me with a big gap and not knowing really what to do uh, it wasn't until about 2018 when junk kind of like wanted some beats for audio heroin that really re-sparked me. And then I needed to really take an, a look and an overhaul of all my social media. Um, I was kind of doing the, and I still am, but differently now I was using mostly my personal Instagram, um, Nate butcher, but then I was trying to put music. So this is where like the whole Nate Ed, Eddie Brock venom thing. And then I, I knew I needed to do an imperative one, but I didn't know how to do it properly. Um, and then I kind of like, I was like experimenting with that whole grid at, like thing where like, um, on Instagram, you mean on Instagram. Yeah. And then I, I don't know where I would have saw it, but like, I think I saw something about the Instagram algorithm and then, uh, learning about this. It's, it reminded me of like when I was a kid with like NES and like double dragon or Ninja, it's like, or super Mario, it's like the pattern against user. And so the algorithm became the pattern against user. And so I needed to figure out how to beat this algorithm to kind of like get my shit out there. So like, music is so much more than just like music. And so I had to teach, well, if I want my shit to get hurt, I need to figure out how this works. Um, and then the, the branding just kind of like, like imperative is very uh, black and white. 
the, like most of the times the colors are either black or white. Um, and then that comes down to balance. Uh, the full circle album cover is a blue eye and a brown eye, which is actually my own eyes. Uh, and, and I'm a Libra. So, and so I didn't necessarily put all these pieces together until later. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to accept this. Like I'm a Libra. Everything comes in black balance, black and white, good and evil, dark and light. And so I've really kind of embraced that sort of vision into what I'm trying to do. Um, and then just learning about the algorithm, man. Like I could, I, I, I feel like that meme from it's always sunny in Philadelphia where he's like all over the board with like the, <laughs> the strings and like the yeah, pin. Yeah. Like I could be talking about the algorithm for days, but like I, I've got it down a bit to a science, but like always, always evolving at the same time. Like, cause audiences are evolving. Um, the algorithms evolving, social media platforms are evolving. Um, like there's, there's always the question, like what happens if Instagram goes down tomorrow? <laughs> Right. I, I, so have yeah. you been building like an email list or anything like that? Like out, something outside of, uh, of social media? Slowly, maybe not as much focus as, uh, I should, but like, uh, again, it kind of comes down to, there's so much shit to, that we have to do in this music. Like, um, I have, I have this year's goals, uh, like, which I, I, th I think this like, you're going to probably ask me later, but like, this is, even, this is just like, this is my to-do list for like today and yesterday and tomorrow. Um, I, I, I do have like my, my goals in here and, and those are always evolving. So this year I have like a clear focus of what I was trying to achieve this year. Uh, and, and then next year I'm going to tackle some, some new goals and email list is probably very well. One of those. Yeah. Dope. Dope. That's really dope to hear, man. I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of people have um, sort of a broad idea of what they what they want to do artistically, but I think narrowing it down to like very clear goals, actionable goals, and like a clear vision is is so huge when it comes to not only achieving success but also measuring success and seeing how close you are to your goals. You know what I mean? For sure, definitely. I mean, goals and, and measurement is definitely something that's come more into play in the last few years. <clears throat> and I think it becomes more and more important to me as as I continue. Um, like, for example, we were talking about, like, graphics. Even I do all my own graphics for my beats. And I was, uh, I was talking to um, Scythe. He, he has a, he's a, so I was talking to him this morning um, on FaceTime, <clears throat> and I was showing him my YouTube we we're talking about YouTube algorithms and metrics and stuff. And I was saying, I'm starting to see patterns now, even in the types of graphics that I do. So that's starting to determine like, like when I go into a graphic and, and a, a type beat, the type of graphic that I designed for that to get more traction. So it, it really, it's crazy. Like when you start thinking like metrics and in, that's why information is so important in this day and age, right? Like, Zuckerberg's like that. That's why our information is so important. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. So. What What do you think? What do you think inspires inspires your vision and feeds your vision? Um. You know, beyond beyond so like what works in the algorithms. Is there anything like artistically that you go to for for inspiration? Definitely. Um, other artists uh, in, in music, like obviously, um, you know, I'm, I'm really influenced by the Griselda guys and what they're doing sonically, visually, <clears throat> um, and business wise. Like, I keep telling people, and like, you'll probably notice like some of the moves I'm trying to make are kind of modeled a bit after that. And I'm not ashamed to say, you know, like, that what they're doing is working. And like, we have to like look at like what we're trying to do and, and find others that are doing it or have done it <clears throat> and figure out what works for us. And like, so like the limited uh, releases, merch or vinyl, like I'm trying to, like, they're just killing it. So definitely heavily influenced, inspired, motivated by Griselda. Um, Kanye is a huge influence of mine. 
uh, and so like artistically and just like what he does artistically as well. Not necessarily, let's not get into like what he says, the words yeah. that come out of his mouth all the yeah. time. <laughs> um, but like uh, being in multimedia design, like uh, I am inspired by, by just art in general um, and, and like graphic design. So uh, is, is it cool if I flip my screen here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely, so, I would love that. I'm going to figure out how to do this. Um, so you can kind of see my desktop here, which is a mess. But in this top corner is just some random images I have saved that are like inspiration pieces. Like um, a lot of times when I'm I'm uh, doing like either a new graphic piece, uh, like from either one of my beats or even clockwork, um, I start doing what I call research. And it's really like a giant Google image uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> and then like, which becomes like a Pinterest rabbit hole, uh, which becomes a Tumblr rabbit hole. Uh, there's also a website called Behance. Uh, I'm giving it away. <laughs> like th this is, these are the, the, the uh, this is the information behind the wizard's curtain right here. Uh, <laughs> Behance.net. It's really a network for artists though. Um, so I, it, when I'm just getting started, I'm like, shit. Uh, like, so for example, Roz, I was like, Hey, well, what do you want? And he's like, orange gas gas town steam clock uh and then he sent me one 90s thing so now i have like these three different things and i'm like now what <laughs> so so what i do is i just like i start just like trying to gather information and images and collecting images um so just i'm inspired by any artist man like a, a lot of times even on instagram um i have a few hashtags that i follow so that's a cheat code as well for people that I don't think enough people do is follow hashtags. Um, and then if there's an artist I like, I'll hit follow and I'll hit save on some of those pieces. Um, in my studio these days, I try and uh, keep uh, myself surrounded. So I have, uh, so I said I'm inspired by Griselda. There's West Side Gun, the Fly God up there. I got the Raptors, We the North. Um, so you can see I've got uh, Vince Carter ball. I've got Kanye up there. Uh, and then I got all my records. So I surround myself really by, by what, um, you know, inspires me and motivates me. <clears throat> yeah. 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 That's so cool, man. Oh. Just, it's really just art, man. I'm just inspired by art and what, what, what other people are doing. Like, yeah. Um, we, you and I were actually talking about this. This is one more thing. Um, you were talking about how you and Covey were doing, uh, weekly weekly like facetimes right or, or chats and, and i sent you a message back i was like take that and 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 make that an everyday thing with a different artist or producer um starting at uh the start of uh covid we're in quarantine we're locked down i started using facetime so much more and i i uh it's not even necessarily scheduled, but like, I'm quick to like, if, if I'm talking to someone, I'm just like whoop, FaceTime. And then uh, I talked to guys for, like uh, Romano on the beat. Uh, Scythe is a new one that I've been chatting to a lot. Um, I was talking to uh, an artist, uh, Arkin or producer Arkin. He's down in New Jersey. Um, I was talking to uh, Snares out in Japan. Um, and then, so I'm talking to all these different producers everywhere. And a lot of times it's just a quick, like they either have a question for me or I have a question for them. And then the conversation like spirals into like, what are you up to? What are you doing? When I was off those phone calls, I'm like, yo, I'm ready to work. Yeah. 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 I feel um, it when I feel it when I wrap up the calls with Covey, I feel it when I wrap up the podcast interviews as well. Like, I mean, it's pretty rare that you have. Uh, you know, an hour to just chat with someone. And I feel like it on a human level, it's so healthy. And then also just like bouncing back ideas with people who are, who are trying to do and are doing really dope things is just inspiring, you know? Definitely. It's definitely is. And one of the new ones, you know, I just kind of popped in my head. Um, I've, I've been um, kind of talking back and forth and with, um, and another artist and and she does like drawings and stuff like that <clears throat> and uh she was she's influenced by my music and like she was always kind of like i would post a beat and she would like 
this sounds like, and, and then it would have like this crazy visual depiction of what my beat sounded like. And I'd be like, whoa, okay. So um, I, I flipped the script and was like, cause like I'm inspired by her drawings and her work as well. And I was like, I was like, hey, I got a project for, for you, for us. And she's like, okay. And I was like, I, I, I'm working, so this is kind of like the first time I've kind of mentioned this, but I'm working on uh, an instrumental project called Piccata, which in, I might not be saying that right, but it, in Latin, that means sins. So it's gonna have seven tracks, so seven sins. I was like, so I asked her to describe each beat without hearing it. So I was like, so each song is, is like the, the sin, but in Latin. So I was like, I want you to describe each beat without hearing it. And then I was going to take that information and then flip it and be like, okay, this is the beat that fits that description. Holy <laughs> sh That's so cool, man. That's so cool. Yeah. It, artists inspiring artists, man. Yeah. It's really, yeah. Dude. Um, so we, we've talked a little bit about vision and, uh, and goal setting as well. And I'm, I don't know if you want to spill the goods on like what your goals are, if you want to put that out there, but I'd love to hear about what your, what your overall ideas are for the next five years or so. For the next five years, you know what? I may, maybe I haven't got, I think I have like a good, like in my head sort of uh, vision of that. Um, where I'm trying to get to is a point where I can just be fully sustain, sustainable and, and live off of music. Um, I, I'm in a good position right now, but I wouldn't say that music is making all of my financial uh, things right now. I, I have had, a, I've been lucky in my situation in, in various ways. I'm not necessarily going to get into that allowed me to, to create um, without fully having to like, to really like could be like worried too much about monetary stuff. Um, but it's not, yeah, I, I don't have any handouts by any means. Um, but it kind of feels in a sense, um, getting a little off topic, but it's, it's kind of in a sense feels like the, the story of the alchemist, uh, which I read last year, which was kind of like a very, um, it was, it was kind of like, it was pulling me in to read it. And when I read it, I was like, holy shit, this sounds like my life. Um, but it, the one big thing to take out of that um, is that when, the, when you have found your path with that, the universe will conspire to help you do that. So even like something, this is going to sound crazy, but like as big as like the pandemic and like, um, like I just started back to work and then the pandemic happened and then I got laid off and now I'm collecting a SERB check and it's like, okay, so I'm getting a government check and I'm working on music. Like, okay. Um, and so I, I literally treated it like a job. Like I'm at my, my desk from nine to nine because this is what I want to be doing. So to get there, the things that I'm trying to do um, for this year, this year was really a year of, um, so I felt like 2018 was kind of like a digging the hole uh, with audio heroin. Uh, 2019 was kind of like a, a building, like pouring the foundation sort of thing. And then this year was really starting to build. Uh, and I was really trying to get my name out there this year. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily as concerned about monetary aspects because I, I see a lot of producers they get so focused in the, the making beat money and selling beats um where they're not making necessarily relationships or, or the right networking so one of my biggest things this year was to get in i had an idea of where i wanted to be which like i want to be producing for the guys that i love like i i don't think there's a, there's not a doubt in my mind that says that i couldn't produce for west side gun or griselda or any of those guys um and and i'm literally at this point in a lot of different ways from a lot of different angles. Like I, I've, I've kind of attacked, uh, I'm like at two degrees of separation from being where I want to be, but still, but still working with people that I believe in too. So like, it's kind of like a pyramid and like, I'm like getting to the top, but I'm like, I'm still in the pyramid that I want to be at, if that makes sense. So that was a big goal of this year. Uh, I'm just, I was trying to flip through my notes here to see if I could find my actual goals, um, but I'll just kind of keep chatting. One, another was just to release a, a ton of music and just really bombard, um, you know, the industry. Like, just be like, um, it started with Full Circle, which uh, doing my own projects really puts me more into con control. Um, 
So I'm going to continue doing those. I do hopefully one to two projects a year that might be on top of that, another instrumental album, or that might be part of that depends on what I'm working on. Um, more uh, drum kits. I'll break it down like this. I saw a meme a long time ago and it was like the seven income streams of a millionaire. I took that and I started thinking, what are the seven income streams of a millionaire producer? And so it was like, I'm trying to figure out how to tackle each one of those. The issue is, is there's so many different angles that we have to attack as a, like an artist and a producer that I had to just really put focus on, on some of those for this year. And then going into next year after I've achieved these ones, um, it is switch those and okay now what do I need to do so uh, I wanted to this year I wanted to uh, release a beat video every week so that's 53 beat videos uh, I think I'm two away right now and I still have uh, still have some months to go um, in September I wasn't really sure like I, I made this one kind of late but I was like hey, I want to reach 300 subscribers on YouTube I hit that at two, well, I was at like 271. So I thought, okay, like 29 or, or yeah, 29 in a year. I, that seemed, but then I hit that in two weeks. So now I've upped it to 400. Um, I wanted to get a major placement. That one didn't really happen. Um, but I, so where I want to, I would like to get my own studio at some point, small, small, like, and uh, where I want to be doing is a little bit more sound design included. Um, I have like ideas like if I, like, I don't know if you know KPM records or like the library music. I would I would like to start a library music, it, which is like kind of royalty free, basically music that producers can sample. Um, but I want to do it in a, in a manner where it's like, I'd be releasing a limited edition 100 vinyl, but on that vinyl is like music that producers can sample. So it's like, if you get, if you like, if you get your hands on one of those vinyl and it's not going to be like, just me, like punching my machine or like, like some of the melodies might be, but like, it would be like, I, I would get like higher instrument, like uh, a pianist or a guitar player to come in and lay down full tracks. So it'd be like, you get that vinyl. It's like, you get like you and a hundred other people are the ones that like, that's, that's a goal. That's such a cool um, idea, man yeah so always, creative like, so creative man um but yeah it's, it's really just getting to working with these art i, I want to be like I, I want imperative to be up there with the alchemist which is a, a like, no small feat i wanted to be up there with the static selectors um here we go here's some 2020 goals instrumental album seven tracks piccata which we were talking about I'm, I'm i don't know if i'll have it done by the end of 2020 it's in the works gutter drums volume two so I released my first drum kit this year. I'm going to start the second one soon. Gutter melodies. So I'm going to start doing, and so gutter, the whole idea behind this gutter is most of the sound packs out there right now are, are uh, catered towards trap production. So you can get an 808 pack. You can get like this trap melody kit, but there's not a lot out there for these like grimy boom bap, right? So a lot of these grimy boom bap producers, even myself, like, we're still digging through the crates for these samples, which is what we love doing. We're going to do it anyways. But when we like, you can't clear those samples and you can run into some big issues. So I think there's a big market out there. Um, Beat Butch is really tackling it right now. But other than that, there's not a ton of people out there really doing it. So that's where Gutter's coming from. So I'm going to do like um, a melody kit. I picked up um, um, a, a tape reel to reel this year. Um, and so... I, I ran a couple melodies through there. So basically what? I'm like taking it off my computer, run it through the reel to reel, and then I run it back from the reel to reel back into my computer. Dude, that is so sick. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, now it's an extra step and like some people have been like, yo, you can just do that with uh, RC20 or, uh. or, but it's like, <laughs> it's not the same. And, and now I, I, I've said reel to reel. I know other producers are out there and they, they have it as well. So it's not like, but I, originally like i was excited about it and i took pictures and i posted online and, and then uh stroker deluca actually he, he's like yo man you might want to take that down i was like oh he's like you know that could be your imperative sound like he's like you know like dj premiere has like a dj premiere sound and like we know that he uses vibe but like he probably has some other like preamps or things like that that you don't necessarily know about 
he's like, so I, I've taken down pictures of that of like the brand and, and stuff like that. And, and I think he's right. Like that's going to be part of the imperative signature. So um, merch was a big, big goal for me this year. Uh, I think like uh, for an artist, like uh, I hate saying it, but a lot of the music is really just commercial for everything else. I, I hate putting it in that sense, but it, it really is. Um, so I, I got my, my shirts, I got hats, I got, I got the vinyl, I got the CD, I got the cassette. So got that. Um, and then, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm working on a ton of stuff. I got grants. Um, but really the, the big five-year goal is to be working with the artists that like I want to be working with, to be recognized, which I'm starting to get the recognition that I think of where I want to be. Like I've got some of my favorite artists right now. I've got like like the one... I'm just trying not to drop names, but like one of the my like one of the artists that I'm really listening to right now, one of his main producers, him and I are like like he, like I saw I was like yo congrats on the new drop. He's like yeah man, congrats on and he knew the name of like one of my recent songs and was like yo this is fire keep that up and I'm like oh shit okay <laughs> so so that's that's it man being fully sustainable that's my biggest goal uh, and just working music and being creative like uh, like Kanye is one of my idols like. I'll probably be doing music now forever, but I want to definitely don't, I probably won't be just doing music only, you know, I think, Hey, if I had an opportunity of doing a clothing line or, or like a shoe line, um, like I have that background, it like as well, like I went to fashion class in, in high school, I had like clothing companies and stuff like that. So, so yeah, man, the sky's the limit and uh, I don't want to be bound by it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like with with the attitude you have and and the way that you approach learning and and progressing, I feel like when when you do that, it's just a matter of time, right? Like that's that's, that's, that's basically what I think. What it that's is. Really the way I feel. Yeah. You, yeah, I think you hit it on on the head there. Yeah. Is there is there anything you do specifically that helps you keep the goals in mind, or are you just like so naturally at your goals that? you don't even need to fuel the fire or is there, is there any like goal setting rituals or things that you do? Um, I, I, my dad used to be on me all the time about writing down goals and, and doing that, uh, and the, and, uh, vision boards and stuff like that, which I didn't, I, I didn't do. Um, a lot of it is in my head and a lot of it is right there, but in, in recent years, I definitely am writing down a lot more. Um, um, started started every year. I'm definitely writing out my my year goals. Um, I didn't really necessarily have the five year sort of thing. I know that's that's another thing they do suggest doing. Um, but uh, and then I'm kind of doing like the to do list. It's just, uh, you know like boom and, and just writing it down and like this is literally lives on my uh, my desk like has like these these arms and it lives right there so it's like i i know all the time um and, and i think like a, a big thing, oops, popped off my little uh, stand here uh a big thing is like you know the reason why i have west side gun and so i'm turning down my volume um like the reason why I surround myself with a, a picture of uh, Kanye and a picture of West Side Gun is like that <laughs> I have Fly God and Jesus looking down on me. And like, those are my two yeah. inspirations. So it's just like, I sit down here and it's like, okay, I got to get to work, you know? So yeah, yeah, that's the biggest thing for goals, man. And, and uh, timelines, like right now, I'm finding more and more like being in a position of control. Um, I'm trying to, set deadlines set timelines like i'm releasing what i just really up, uploaded a song that won't come out until november 13th um so i'm I, I learned very quickly with full circle like um i can't just be like i got a song i gotta release it it doesn't work that way so it's just very time and structured and uh planning so is, is it what are you doing for your goals and stuff um I, uh, I've been like, I have some five and 10 year goals and then I have some yeah. shorter term ones, um, with the podcast and, and financially as well. Um, 
And I'm kind of trying to measure it financially, not because like I care so much about money, but it's just like something that's so concrete and I can, I can see progression. It's the benchmark, right? It's yeah, the benchmark. exactly. Exactly. Um, also, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to buy a house one day. I don't want to be renting forever. So that's, that's, uh, I, I feel that, but um, I've been, you... Go ahead. I've been like writing, writing affirmations mm -hmm. down every morning is, is what I'm doing right now. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's dope. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like similar to what, like, uh, I, I know you've seen them, my Facebook posts lately. Yes. Um, yes, that's, man. so some of those have kind of come from, um, uh, one, I've, excuse my language. I fucking hate Facebook <laughs> and it's such a toxic wasteland. Um, and I just start, was seeing people, man, like, cause I like, I, I, you've pointed it out, like, I'm such a, like, I try and stay, like, I can do whatever I want sort of mentality. Um, but then people are, I see so many people that are like, they make these posts and these statuses of the things that they do like, oh, I wish I had a girlfriend, right? Like, but then they're like posting these memes and shit that's so negative and it's just perpetuating that, that negative stereotype in their mind, that negative energy. And so that's where I kind of like, I think it was, only, this has been going on for a few weeks now slowly and gradually and more and it's just like i'm gonna flip the script and like even if i'm feeling something negative i'm gonna figure out a way to say it in a positive way so like um like one was like about how communication is key and that's really because i had artists that weren't talking to me and it was pissing me off and and rather than re releasing that negative energy i tried being like communication is key because uh one for myself because i'm not saying i'm like the master communicator by any means but like maybe someone sees that and they're going they're like oh shit i should text my producer and tell him what's going <laughs> on <laughs> um so yeah. that, that's really um the, where those cause that's similar to your affirmations yeah um did have you ever seen so you're talking about monetary have you ever seen um the the uh interview producer brian has with ryan leslie Definitely, I'll send that to you. You should definitely check that out. But he basically breaks down how much money he he says, like he basically broke down like how much money he wanted to make or something, and broke it down and then just like worked backwards and then followed through and it was like with like concerts and stuff like that. Um, and, and like he hit those, so like that might be. I'm kind of taking that as well, so a monetary approach. But just um, I just haven't done it yet this with this year. And all the goals um and, and like i said i was kind of now i'm building well now now that i have the dollar amounts of how much did this like the 100 cds cost me how much did the 100 vinyls cost me how much did it cost to to mix that project how much did it cost to master how much did it cost for features now that i have all those numbers like i didn't have those numbers before so if, if i wanted to before I, I, you know, if you asked me, like, I wouldn't have known. And, and now that I have that information, like I said, I like, you know, I, I had a bank of money that I could use that I was like, not feeling the stress if I used it. So I could do a lot of things that I wanted to, like um, buy a Mickey Fax feature, um, get Jamie Cuse to, to mix and master my entire product. So I could do those things and, and buy the vinyl. Like I was seeing and hawing on the vinyl because like this shit ain't cheap. And and I was like, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it. But now, now I have the numbers and I, the dollar amount. And so I can measure the metrics. And what I want to do for next year is um, use those numbers to be like, well, how many albums do I have to make? At how much? At what, at what cost? How much money will I make from streaming? So, okay, like in order to make, let's say 40000 a year, which is like a base salary for most people. How many albums do I need to produce? How many, how much royalties do I need to get? Like how many, so that, that's really my goal is because without that information, man, like we we're saying earlier, information is power. Once you have that information, you can plug it in to like whatever yeah. you're in a position of power. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And if, yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. And I, are, are I you doing any? Are you doing any vision board stuff yourself? It's one thing I've I've thought about. I just, I, yeah. I, I think I I think I do, but unintentionally okay, in some yeah. ways. I I haven't been. I mean. I'm a really, I, I'm a words guy. Like words are really big for me. That's why I write. And, um, yeah. 
so so visual isn't too big for me but i've been trying to like sink myself into those like um the visual of the goals that i want to get and the like sink myself into what it would feel like and um i think a vision board is probably not a bad idea just something you look at every day and just reminds you you know yeah i've heard of people who like they literally put like a car on the ceiling above their bed so like they wake up and they see that car right i've heard of things like that i mean i don't necessarily go that far yeah um but kind of like in the realm of where like like i'm a a believer in in laws of attraction um let's not go to the secret deep but like i do believe in like a a kind of a law of attraction uh um sort of thing but um they're they're saying like um they put a, a like a, a, a marathon runner or sorry like a sprinter on a treadmill and the, they put him like eyes open and they like put him to the test like heart rate monitor and all brain neural monitor and it's and like he ran the race on the treadmill and they, they took all the, the biometrics well then they they took him off the treadmill they told him to close his eyes and they told him to run that same run in inside his brain and and the, and apparently the the metrics were near identical of like just doing it inside of like his own brain to like physically doing it so like i like to always think in terms of that and like it it, it is a battle but like um keeping like your what you think about is is a huge thing to achieve so yeah (laughs) i uh um, I feel, I feel like this next question we've already answered, but maybe there's, there's a couple nuggets that you, that you might want to throw, throw out there, but do you have any advice for, for beat makers or producers getting like fresh into the industry, either from a business like hustle or a creativity standpoint? Um, so in terms of business, definitely join the producer connect on Facebook. <laughs> um, um, no, um, for and there's so much information out there uh right now I, I think it's you have to do you have to do it you have to want it um there's a lot of artists that like they, they just want to create and if that if that's if you just want to create and you have no interest in the business whatsoever the fact of the matter is you're gonna have to hire someone and and uh you, you need to realize that it, and the, there's there's the difference of like a, a hobbyist beat maker and then there's like someone who's gonna go and, and really go after it um but like set time aside um i was waking up every morning i'm not doing it right now i just don't have anything that in mind right now that i wanted to be doing but uh, i was waking up every morning at the start of quarantine and make my coffee and it comes to here and i was watching uh, a tutorial video uh for indiepreneur which is some like facebook marketing stuff um so every morning that was that was it until it was done right uh this comes down to the goal setting as well uh i think organization and scheduling is so key mixed in with with that goal setting um that if you don't have any structure to your day like there's there are some days like when i and this, even me saying this out loud is like coming more clear. Um, but like, if you don't have structure to your day, it's like, okay, well, I've got to make this to be, okay, I got to do this for this person. I got to do that for that person. And then all of a sudden, like you're getting away from yourself. But if you have a structure to your day, like, okay, I'm going to come down, I'm going to learn for an hour. Then I'm going to start working on a beat, um, you know, for this. Okay. And then I'm going to take a break. Like when you have that structure, it's, it's way easier to achieve. Um, I know sometimes that can limit some people's creativity uh, a little bit, um, but it just depends on the person. So I think business is really, there's so many resources out there. You, there's really not a lot of excuses to, to not learn it unless you just really don't want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, that's cool. Um, hire someone, you know. Um, I, I decided it, uh I decided a bit ago, like I can mix to a point. I never wanted to, I never wanted to touch mastering because as it says, a master, I want to leave, I want to leave mastering to a master. That's so I never wanted to touch mastering. Um, but like mixing, like I can mix, like I mix my beats to a point. Uh, I used to mix vocals and stuff, but like, I just decided uh, I have more like 
my creative outlook. So I, I outsource that, you know, figure out, figure out what you're good at and what you're not. And then, it, you know, you, you are probably going to have to pay someone to do the stuff you don't want to do. That's just the reality. Uh, in terms of creativity, don't let anyone tell you what you can and can't do, uh, what you shouldn't do. Uh, there, there, you know, there is no rules in this music. Like if you want to bang pots and pans, I'm not going to listen to that shit, but someone out there might, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I had a, a, a producer, a peer, a colleague, whatever you want to call it, uh, message me at one point being like, yo, why are you making these like grimy boom bap beats? And like, like, there's no market for that. And I was like, uh, yo, like th there is like, it's just not the market that you're like, cause like I was involved in like, I was listening to West Side Gun and like, I could see that market. And I started like diving into like, okay, like here's a tidbit. So like, uh, I knew I wanted to like West Side Gun. So if I go to West Side Gun and I look at his Instagram followers, I guarantee you there's like a hundred thousands of artists that like that sound and, and are, so if I start following stuff in there, um, I'm going to, I'm going to come across people. And then like, I, I kind of went down the, the chain of like command and sort of thing. And, and um, there is a market, but I'm kind of sidetracking there, but like, don't, don't let anyone tell you what you can or shouldn't do. Like make what you want to make. Cause like, I, I don't, I don't hate the fact that I pivoted when I was in Vancouver and I started making some other sounds. Cause but like I said, I'm, we're an amalgamation of everything we've learned. So um, making some of the beats that I didn't necessarily want to or like wasn't this I don't even think it wasn't that I wasn't didn't want to like I think I got into it and was enjoying it but now like I'm doing what I what I really love and the sounds that I want to make so just don't let anyone stifle that um business create hustle that's on you um that you know the hustle it's, it's all about you and what you want to achieve out of it. You know, everyone's different. If you want to just make beats or like produce, like just for the fun of it, you know, it's there. Like I, it's therapy for me as well. Um, you know, but just don't be, don't, you can't be upset if you don't get those goal or you don't get those opportunities that other people are. Um, you know, like even if you're the dopest hobbyist producer, um, hard work beats out talent when talent isn't working hard. Right. Like, so, uh, you know, I don't necessarily think I'm like the, the best producer, um, but I fucking work hard. So that, that's on, that's, that's on you. It, like uh, each individual, you know, how, what you get out, what you want. Um, but if you're going out every night to the club, spending money, um, you know, spending money, feeling shitty the next day, you're probably not going to be very motivated to create uh, yeah. the next. And, and I've, I've even learned that myself. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to have the money to, to put, put towards your goals as well. If you're, if you're blowing it as well on nights out and I've been there you're, as well, man. You're right, man. Goals cost money. <laughs> yeah. Before, before you start getting it back, yeah. it, it costs for sure, man. Oh, you got to spend I, money to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I've, I've really enjoyed this whole conversation. Um, I just have one last question for you before we before we clock out here. Just what what do you think overall the impact that you want to leave with with your creativity in in the world? Um, just, I really think I, I kind of compare it to like now this is a big one, but like I, I'm not shy to hold back like that. I, I can um, be whatever I want, but like. Um, I think of like Jay Dilla's legacy um, in the sense that like, um, so he, like, and I can't even necessarily compare, but it's just like the legacy sort of he left was like, he wasn't like the most successful in terms of like say monetary per se. Um, but his name will ring, ring on for like, you know, uh, time to come. But like, it's just like, I care less about the monetary. The monetary is cool. Um, it's cool measurement and, and stuff like that. Um, and you, it does, monetary stuff does open some doors as well. But um, I, I think like, I just, I want people to be like, yeah, he, he lived, like he was a creative that lived to create. Like, that's why like, you know, I still do graphic design. I'll still do some video, whatever I do in life. I just want to be creating. Um, like I know when Jay Dilla was um, diagnosed, he was on his deathbed making beats, like trying to like, like, 
I need to get out as many beats. Like that was his legacy, man. Like I can't even imagine being on my deathbed and just like, he's cramming out as many beats as he could just to leave that behind. Um, so that like, I think about things like in terms of that, like, like, I just want to like, I have a hard drive right here. And like, I've kind of told, if, like, if, not to be morbid, but I've told like, yo, if anything happens to me, you're in charge of this hard drive. <laughs> like no, no pressure. But like, cause like I have, I have probably over 500 beats on here, uh, if not more, and probably some other things. And, and I just, yeah, that that's it, man. I just want to be a, a, um, a guy that helps other people. Uh, that's been a big thing is like, I, I, I've kind of gotten away from the whole producer competition thing of like, no, like I, I should have that placement or I should be working with that artist. And I, and I found more solitude, like uh, helping people, like if uh, like, um, any any information like if it's about the Instagram algorithm whatever like if it's about how to get your royalties like I've I, I'm here to help and then because and like even if it's an opportunity like I'm like passing on opportunities to other people like people someone hitting me up and like yo I need a beat like this and be like well that's not me but so and so could do that so being a uh, like just a good overall good person and uh, just someone that yeah created and just always created and lived by that you know yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Really, really cool. Um, and just just before we we end it, do you want to just uh, let people know where they can get at you and let let people know what you, what you got coming up as well? For sure. Um, all social media platforms. It's I M P E R E T I B. That's imperative yeah. spelled phonetically, uh, not grammatically. I don't even know if that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I M P E R E T I B. Uh, pretty much all social medias. Um, I, I, right now I'm, I'm working on a bunch of different stuff. I got, I got a project with Dax empire. Um, out, out of, he's a, down in the States. Uh, he just put out a massive track with styles P called warriors cry. We've got an album in the works. Um, and that's going to be so different, like from the type of sound, like there's some like Drake type, like sounds on there. That's, so that's going to be very different. Um, G four Jag, I was, uh, he's kind of brought me into his fly family. So I'm working on uh, a couple of his artist projects. I've got my own project, uh, my next project that I'm working on, uh, which is a double EP, I think right now. It might evolve uh, or de-evolve, um, but Burial Plots and Pyramid Schemes, High Hopes and Lucid Dreams. So that's the two projects, um, Dark and Light again. Uh, so I'm working on those. I'm still, I got a bunch of features. I'm still just trying to bring it home right now. Um, gutter melodies gutter drums that's that's really the big things and um man there's so much other music I, was, I think i was counting the other day and there's like there's probably 50 unreleased imperative produced tracks right now for me. wow that's yeah. wild man that's so um, much music yeah and already this year i think i've i've released just over 20 tracks this year and i've got three left in the chamber for the rest of the year and then wow. the instrumentals for all of those. Wow. So, dude, that's that's insane. That's insane. Yeah. That what my beat folder, man. Like I used to have a beat folder of like 150 plus beats. Like right now, I'm scrounging my beats. Like I have yeah. I have beats that like are, like I'll make a beat and then like t okay dope and I'm tucking away. Right now, I'm going to all those. I'm trying to finish yeah. those. Like, yeah. Wow. Cool, man. Well, thanks yeah. for. Uh, Thanks for being on the show and I really appreciate like you you're really open with your goals you dropped a lot of gems and I I think it'll be really valuable to the audience and I appreciate you being so open. Awesome man. Well, thank you for having me. Um what am I guest number 2? Uh 3. 3? All right. Yeah. Guest number 3. Thank you for having me, man. <laughs> and Dude. I best I wish you the best of luck with this new endeavor, man. I'm thank sure you. we'll chat outside. I guess yeah. I'll do that Ryan Leslie interview and uh Yeah, please do. Please do. So obviously I want to say thanks to Imperative for rolling through and having such a great chat. I think the main takeaways from the interview that I think are maybe overlooked by a lot of artists and I think very important is creating these really clear goals for yourself and also diving into the education about the business side of things. I think one thing that he said that is really pertinent is if you don't want to learn the business side of things, 
and you want it to be a career, that's fine, but you'll have to hire somebody. So really looking at it from that perspective, and I think something that Imperative does extremely well is he invests in himself. If you look at the quality of his merch and his his production quality on his albums, it's clear that he's invested in himself and to me that signals that he believes in his vision. And I think a lot of artists can take something from that. You may have to put some money up front to be successful, but if you really believe in your vision and you believe in your quality, then that shouldn't be a problem because you can expect it to come back to you. So that's, those are a couple thoughts about, about what, he, what he said on the business end of things and then just from a craft perspective, I have so much respect for his work ethic in his craft and also you can tell how dedicated he is to art in general and I think that's really beautiful. So I hope that you give him a follow. I hope that you pay attention to what he's doing because he's really an example of someone grinding with a vision and really doing his thing and, and just salute to Imperative. Finally, if you want to follow me on Instagram at MuseWorks Audio, you can keep up to date with all my vlogs and all my podcast episodes as well as other things that I'm doing. And if you want to check out my vlogs, you can check them out on YouTube, MuseWorks Audio YouTube channel, which there will be a link in the show notes. And finally, just uh, throw a review, subscribe, give it a rating, and shoot me a DM or whatever. If you have any further questions about this podcast or... If you, if you have any thoughts about whether or not you enjoyed the podcast or what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, I'd love to have a chat. And uh, I really hope that all the things that I'm doing are valuable to you as an artist because um, these are crazy times and I think art is such a beautiful thing that can help so many people and inspire so many people and bring, bring positivity and truth and justice to light. So... I'm going to keep doing this, and I hope you're enjoying it. So thanks so much. Mike Irish, MuseWorks Audio, signing off.